Cloud hosting versus virtual private servers. Which one should you choose? Well, this video, I'm breaking down both, giving you the pros and cons of a virtual private server, one you host and control, and paying someone a monthly fee and just saying, hey, I need a WordPress site. What are the differences? And which one should you choose? This video is brought to you by UpCloud. They have data centers around the world. Definitely check them out. I'll leave a link in the description below. It comes with a free $25 credit that you can use to test out their VPS services that I'm gonna go over in this video. So first off, VPS versus cloud hosting. This is kind of a weird one because a lot of cloud hosting can mean a lot of different things. So I'm actually gonna change cloud hosting to say web hosting. Uh, I wanna just differentiate those two because cloud hosting can mean virtual private servers, but it can also mean web hosting depending on the website you check. So just think of uh, when I say cloud hosting or web hosting, that's really what I'm meaning. And then when I say VPS, that's your virtual private server, it means you're renting server space from one of these data centers and then you can control the server. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into this VPS versus web hosting. So first off, VPS is your own server. You are the one that sets up your website. You are the one that controls the security of your website. You are the master of your server. I absolutely love this if you have the skill set to do it because one, it's cheaper, two, you get better performance, and then three, you can do all kinds of customizations with it. The big downside, well, you gotta know what you're doing. That's why I make a lot of VPS videos going over, you know, setting up your website from scratch that installs, you know, installing Apache or a LAMP stack, all these different things to get a website to work. That's kind of what I do in a lot of my videos. I absolutely love this solution. It's by far my favorite. And anybody that's watched the channel for any extended period of time knows what I think about the next option, which is web hosting. So why do people use web hosting? Well, thanks YouTube. Most Sponsorships on YouTube revolve around web hosts, people that get paid good affiliate links. And when I say good, like I don't get paid for you to click on a link and then go ahead and go through it. Most of that isn't affiliate revenue on my VPSs that I've done in the past. Actually, both sponsors uh, were just straight up paid spots that are, hey, just a quick advertisement. I don't see any money from you clicking that link. However, if I would have done a web host, I would see almost 40% of all revenue that you'd share with them. That's a huge, huge commission. So I really should recommend web hosting because I would get paid a lot more money. However, I hate web hosting. Why is that? And the answer is web hosts are able to sell a lot of really cheap servers or web space because what they do is they share one server in a lot of instances, one instance of a server where you'll have 10, 20, 100 websites all sitting on the same server. What does this do? Well, let's say one server starts seeing a lot more traffic. It could bog down the rest of the servers or the rest of the websites on that server. So one website gets a lot of traffic, the rest of the websites suffer. And this is so bad. That's why when it comes to web hosts, I'm always like, if you see a plan that's like $5, $10 or, or even less than that per month, run because that's exactly how they're getting those cheap prices. And shared web space is garbage. It's nothing you ever, ever want to put a business on. I've had to move so many business websites, just specifically they've done crappy web hosting. And some people are like, hey, what web host do you recommend? And I'm always like, well, it depends on the website. If it's a WordPress website, I always just say WP Engine. They're not cheap, but guess what? They work, they have reliable servers, and I don't know, I, I know they don't sub subscribe to this really crappy practice. They have a really good clustered environment. I've never had poor performance using WP Engine. Now, they're not sponsored, they haven't paid me any money, uh, they haven't even talked to me, and guess what? I recommend them, they're that good. But, they're also not cheap. When I say not cheap, I think their lowest plans like around 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that today. It could fluctuate depending on what you do. And I don't even have a link for you to click on. Just go check them out, WP Engine. Just type it in Google, they'll pop up. 
But as far as other web hosts, well, I've been on almost all of them. And I got to say, most of the performance is inconsistent. There's times I've had to move off of many of these hosts because I've had some of the more popular ones that I've seen actually get hacked and actually had ramifications with the website I've, I've actually dealt with where the business had some issues. And I was like, well, let's just take the backups, move it over to another website, and that's what we did. Or host the own website using a VPS. Very important. This is one reason why you got to watch out what web hosting you do. And if it's a really cheap web host, it's probably not going to end well for you. So why do people use web hosting? So there's the marketing aspect. Most people all over social media recommend it because their affiliate payouts are amazing. I really rethinking actually doing this video because if I flip this around, I can make a lot more money. Anyways, disregard. Uh, they are very easy to set up. So you got the marketing aspect. They kill in marketing. They're awesome. And then you got the easy setup portion of it, which is also incredibly awesome. So definitely, as far as the easy setup goes, hey, you just sign in. You have your own stocked instance. If it's a WordPress site, well, you got all your WordPress just sitting there, and then you just start loading templates and going. Anyone can do it. And then besides like that, there's no real other pro to doing web hosting. You don't have as many... Uh, customization options you don't have any control over what goes on as far as performance issues and you're reliant on their support and that's when you have to contact the support now i've been in it for almost 20 years so i've had to contact a lot of support on all these different sites and i gotta say there's very few that actually pass the bar of hey telling me what's going on i've had all kinds of uh, bs answers and different things and headaches from many web hosting companies that's why I never really recommend any of them. And if I had to pick one other reason why you would want to go with a web host, because obviously this was not a very good uh, video where you're like, hey, you choose. No, most, most instances I'm like, choose the VPS. If you got some skills, definitely use the VPS. But there is another instance where I would say, okay, don't use a VPS, use a web host. And that is in really big instances where you have a website that does tons and tons and tons of traffic, like tens of thousands of hits per day. Well, one server isn't going to cover that. I don't care how big that VPS server is. It's not going to cover that kind of traffic and you need to do clustering and other things. And that's where a web host would be better equipped with that because you're going to need someone with a considerable skill set to set up clustering and other things to make that website run flawlessly. So definitely watch this. Um, a big, big thing when it comes to actually setting up your, your website. So uh, I honestly still skew towards the actual VPS a lot of times, even if uh, I've never seen a website that actually needed the clustering aspect of it. And when it comes to websites that started to get hit pretty hard or the VPS started performing not as well because I was getting thousands of hits per day, I would usually just pump it over to a CDN or a content delivery network and then go from there. My delivery network of choice is CDN77. Again, I've used them in past videos and I use them on my website and they're awesome. They, it, it's actually a really great company that has awesome services. But again, they're not cheap. That's really meant for big business if you're getting thousands of hits per day. Otherwise, you probably don't even need a CDN. You just want to set up a sample website. A VPS just makes a lot more sense. Um, but those are my opinions. When it comes to VPS versus web hosting, a lot of times I say VPS. If you have this skill set, you can set it up. There's no reason not to do a VPS. And if you don't and you just want an easy one-click setup, know what you're getting into and don't cheap out on that web host because guess what? That's going to come back to bite you. Just saying. But with all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.